Now, joining us to give answers to some of the questions uh, relating to insecurity and the military's role in mitigating the menace is Nigeria's number one military officer, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo. Welcome to the program, General, and good afternoon. Happy Democracy Day to you. Good afternoon, Ladi. A happy Democracy Day. I'm delighted to be here. And Thank I you. I appreciate Nigerians. Thank you for your time. Now, from the last June 12, let's take it for about a year, from the last June 12 celebration till now, uh, how would you assess the country's security situation? Well, before I come to assess the security situation, I'd like to crave your indulgence to um, congratulate Nigerians for over two decades of unbroken democracy in Nigeria. And to equally appreciate and commend members of the armed forces, both served and retired, for realizing the need for democracy and putting it into context, knowing that democracy is a process and everyone of us needs to keep our eyes on the ball in order for us to indeed um, achieve the desired you know, development and progress of our nation. Now, Back to your question, which has to do with assessing security situation from the last uh, June 12th Democracy Day celebration of 2021 to now, I will say that a lot has happened, quite a lot of improvement in terms of uh, the armed forces and other security agencies doing all that is necessary to bring peace to the various <coughs> troubled regions of the country. And I know that um, even though you've just given some snippets of some reports, uh, I can tell you that, um, um, you, know, you know, from last year to now, we have had, you know, quite a lot of improvements from the northeast to the northwest, north central, uh, south south, southeast, and southwest. Of course, there still remains a, a long haul in terms of addressing the nuances that attend to insecurity in Nigeria. Given that scenario, General, many of those listening to you will shake their heads and say they don't see any signs that things have indeed improved. Uh, I mean, if we take a couple of, if we take a couple of examples, uh, not to go too far, uh, you have uh, what happened uh, just over a week ago or so now uh, in Owo in uh, Ondo State. Before that, in March, uh, you had the Kaduna train incident uh, of which only yesterday or thereabouts, 11 of the 62 people who were uh, kidnapped were released. That means about just over 50 of them are still in captivity more than two months later. And there are several other examples. There was the uh, brutal killing of the House of uh, Assembly member uh, in Anambra State, uh, uh, the member representing uh, Governor Chukuma Saludo's constituency. So if we take just, I mean, some of these examples, there will be those who will argue that there's no sign of this improvement, so perhaps you, you want to speak to that and explain to them what you mean by improvement. Well, thank you. No doubt um, there are incidences that have occurred, which of course manifest insecurity across the country. It would be a foolhardy for anyone to think that we have, you know, achieved our end state. No, we have not. And this, of course, I need to categorically state. But what you must understand is that with these events or incidences which you've just uh, enumerated, there are hundreds and thousands more that have been eliminated. Perhaps you may not know um, that just only the same uh, week you are talking about uh, the war incident, in Kano, for example, Given the intelligence available to defense and security agencies, we were able to botch what would have been the um, most catastrophic incidents within our country. And in that operation, we indeed recovered IEDs, that is, improvised explosive devices making materials. We recovered large quantum of arms and ammunition and other materials which, of course, the criminals were intending to use in various parts of the country, including Abuja. We equally, of course, have had, diff, you know, um, both covert and overt operations across 
the parts of Nigeria, ensuring that the ignoble intentions of uh, the criminals amongst us are not brought to fruition. That the uh, one incident happened, and of course the few incidents which you touched on does not imply that improvements have not happened. Let me perhaps you know, state that peace is a process. Peace is not an end state. And if, of course, you could take um, a look at you know, uh, the, 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 the war stage, I mean, countries around the world, you'll find incidents of, of violence and criminality in one way or the other. But that does not mean that we should not you know, put what is happening within our country in focus and ensure that we take all measures necessary such that we get to a stage where we'll be recording zero incidents. And I believe that that is possible, and that's precisely what we're working at. In, in general, some analysts have said that, you know, there appears to be a trend of militant expansion to territories in which, you know, they had largely not been present previously. Um, what can you tell us about the extent of um, ISWAP in Nigeria and Boko Haram, on the other hand? Well, ISWAP being um, an international criminal network, of course, has its ideology and it also has its aims and objectives. Uh, why it's not, you know, um, it's not my intention to focus on what the ideology or what their intentions are. It is necessary for us to understand that within the territorial space that Nigeria, we have measures that have, been, that have been put in place and of course that we're also reviewing to ensure that um, the menace of ISWAP and other terrorist elements do not escalate beyond what it is, rather to have it you know, um, taken out completely. And this is the reason why continuously we indeed advocate or counsel Nigerians to understand that terrorism does not have color, does not have race, and has no respect for religion. And the fuel for terrorism is hatred. And that is why we seek the understanding of Nigerians to support the security, defense and security agencies in ensuring that right information is passed at the right time in order for us to ensure that those elements who want to disturb our peace, who want to disrupt our peace, who do not want us to get to what our national aspirations, what they are achieving them, do, you know, um, have them taken out amongst us. So for me, um, on this Democracy Day, my appeal to Nigerians, and of course to you members of the first estate of the realm, is to focus on the things that matter. That is, what is it that unites us? What is it that we need to know in order to make peace? What is it that we need to know on our part as members of the Defense and Security Forces in order to be able to you know, um, dot the I's and cross the T's with respect to our operational plan such that um, every Nigerian will indeed live in a state of peace. So this, of course, would be my appeal, and I, I think that it's necessary for us to focus on that rather than you know, looking at the expansion of ISWAP amongst several other issues. Uh, which, in my view, uh, will not bring hope to Nigerians, which, of course, um, in the team of this democracy uh, message, is bringing hope to Nigerians. In general, you've talked about, you know, the people, you've talked about how perhaps intelligence needs to now go back to the grassroots, but how much do the people trust you know, the military, do they trust the government? I mean, this was a problem. Uh, solving COVID, for example, the government had a trust in the people to give out all of those uh, protocols. But how much trust is there for that information? And this is also to forestall any violence or incident. Well, Mr. thank you for that question. Let me say that trust is a commodity that does not belong to the military not the civilians, rather it is that which belongs to all of us as Nigerians. So it is not about how much the civilian or the populace trust the military, no. It is for us to have an understanding that we can withhold information and expect that miracle will happen. Certainly it's not going to happen. I'm a victim as well as any other Nigerian that is on the street. We're all victims together. There is no one who is on the other side of, of, of uh, the steel wall. No, we're in need together. Our family members are in need 
We as men and women at the front lines, we are in need, we take the first hit. So the issue is this, trust ha is not, is not, you know, it, it, it's not something that uh, we need to beg for, but it is for us to bring the understanding why there has to be trust. Indeed, our citizenship is anchored on the need for us to trust each other. That's the reason we have the, the, the national anthem and of course the pledge. So for me, um, I, I, will, I will, you know, seek and of course crave the indulgence of all Nigerians to say that, look, there has to be trust. Trust must exist and trust must be given in all respects so that together we will achieve the, the, the state of peace that we so desire. General, uh, there are several, there, there, there are a lot of things that you've said there about trust building and all of that between uh, the population and the military and the fact that the military is in fact part of the population. Uh, in the report we played before we came to you, there was a picture of the lady uh, who is a family member of one of those uh, who is in custody, uh, uh, shall we say, of the kidnappers uh, from the Kaduna train incident. Uh, there are other families uh, uh, who, are, who have lost loved ones in our war, uh, and those who have lost loved ones in the southeast, in the northeast, military men, uh, retired officers, and so on, who are all feeling the pain of this insecurity challenges. Uh, we know that you have to get to the church service, uh, which is part of today's Democracy Day. So one will ask you, what will you say to those people to assuage their feelings that, look, this is a big hole that we, we seem to find it difficult to climb out of because it appears that even though you say that for everyone that uh, uh, eventually happens, so many uh, are foiled, the one that happens is the one that people focus on because that is where their pain comes from. What will you say to those people to assuage those pains and to give them hope that this is not going to be continuous. Well, thank you very much, Ladi, for, for that question. First and foremost, let me equally thank you uh, on the Chinese television generally over the reportage concerning the 11 release uh, victims that uh, happened yesterday. Now, I'm sure as the days go by, you will understand that Nigerians that are concerned were part of those who were responsible for the safe return of, 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 those, of those victims. And I think the chiefest of them all, of course, is Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief, who, of course, has given us a, a much another that everyone who is behind, you know, uh, uh, enemy lines, I mean, like, who are in the dens of, of um, you know, uh, their, their captors, must be released, you know, hail and hearty. That, of course, was, was the, the, um, the caveat that he added to us in the mandate. And so, it means that if there is any um, rescue operation that is to be conducted, any one that leads to the death of the captives, then of course it means that that operation is not a success. So this is the reason why all the avenues of approach to solving this problem is being, is being pursued. And so what I need to perhaps at this stage uh, talk, uh, tell uh, you know, the families of the victims is for them to continue to have hope on the defense and security forces, along with other where many Nigerians who are engaged in ensuring that peace return to our land. All hope is not lost. And I must say, all hope is not lost. Every day, and I'm glad that, and I also need to use this opportunity to congratulate Mr. President for the, for, for the broadcast that he made this morning. And in need, he, he actually captured that every day he's in grief over the, um, you know, the plight of uh, those victims that are in various, uh, you know, uh, states of captivity. So this is actually the spirit that drives our action. And we, of course, um, you know, feel the pain of everyone, or, of course, the um, family members, and to, and to perhaps use this opportunity to assure them that no stone will be left unturned and ensuring that the, their, their loved ones return to, to them again. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, this objective that we set for ourselves will be achieved. So, so let them keep hope alive. And I also would like to um, you know, urge Nigerians to continue to keep hope alive, uh, make the necessary uh, you know, contributions and give information that will uh, 
that, that never again shall we have a situation where Nigerians will, will, be, will be abducted and will, um, of course, will be there you know, in perpetuity. That is something that we must end, and I believe that we will achieve it going forward. Amen to that. Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Rabo, many thanks for joining us uh, today. And we'd also like to thank members of the armed forces for all they do. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Let's take a break. And when we return, we'll delve deeper into the security risk factors and some of the other solutions that are possible. Please stay on with us.